Hi, welcome. This is Clemens at Elector. In this video, we will uh, play around a bit with a uh, simple analog circuit, a single op amp uh, fixed frequency oscillator, and that we are going to transform into a voltage controlled oscillator or a VCO. We will start by analyzing the circuit in LT Spice, and then we build it on a breadboard to try it out for real. We start with a circuit that I took from the Texas Instruments datasheet for the TLO82. The circuit is a simple square wave oscillator with an output frequency of around 0.5 Hz. I have drawn the circuit in the LT Spice's circuit simulator so we can analyze its behavior. For the op amp I used an AD TLO82, which is the analog devices version of the TLO82 and that's integrated in LT Spice. Note that I had to specify an initial condition to get the oscillator simulation to start. This condition forces the op-amp's output to a non-zero value, which is required to get the comparator to work. In real life, uh, the noise present in the circuit will take care of this. When we measure the frequency using the cursors, we find a value of 0.6 Hz, which is slightly faster than intended. Understanding the circuit is uh, easy, especially when you know that you can ignore R4 and R5, which are for input balancing purposes or similar matters. So let's suppose the output voltage is high, uh, let's say uh, 15 volts, then the resistor R1 will charge capacitor C1 until it reaches uh, 15 volts. The capacitor voltage is connected to the inverting input of the op amp. While C1 is charging and the output is high, a voltage divider R2 R3 forces 90% of the output voltage on the non-inverting uh, input of the op amp, uh, which is about uh, 13 volts. Because the op amp is wired as a comparator, as soon as the voltage on the inverting input becomes higher than the voltage on the non-inverting input, the output switches to low, which is in this case uh, about uh, minus 15 volts. R1 will now start discharging C1 to minus 15 volts, and the voltage on the non-inverting input drops to around minus 13 volts. When the voltage on C1 becomes lower than the voltage on the non-inverting input, the op amp output will switch back to high again, and we are back where we started. The circuit is oscillating. The output frequency is determined by two parameters. The time constant set by R1 and C1, which in this case is 100 kilo ohms times 3.3 microfarads, uh, which equals 330 milliseconds, and also by the comparator switching levels that are now set at 90% of the output voltage. Because the goal is to build the circuit on a breadboard with parts that I have readily available, uh, I change the circuit a bit. Also, I set the frequency much higher to about 180 Hz, so it's easier to visualize on an oscilloscope. C1 is now 10 nanofarads, R3 is 10 kilo ohms, and R2 is 100 kilo ohms. Such values are also easier to use in calculations. I left out the balancing resistors R4 and R5. The next step is to change the power supply to a single 5 volt supply. I didn't connect C1 to half the supply voltage, as that isn't necessary. You can try this out for yourself in LT Spice. For R2, however, this is obligatory, as we want the voltage on the non-inverting input to swing around 2.5 volts. The TL082 is not specified to work from a 5 volt supply, so we have to replace it by a single supply low voltage op amp. In LT Spy it still works, but the output signal has become sloppy. I replaced the TL082 by an AD8542, which I happen to have in my stock, and that's also part of the LT Spy's library. Running the simulation now shows an output frequency of 162 Hz. After building the circuit on a breadboard and then measuring the output frequency with an oscilloscope, I found 176 Hz, which is quite close to the simulated value. So now comes the interesting part. As I said earlier, the oscillator frequency is determined by two parameters. The time constant set with C1 and R1, which now is 100 kilo ohms times 10 nanofarads, which is 1 millisecond and by the switching levels of the comparator, which are now 91% uh, of the output voltage. So how can we change this into something that can be controlled by a voltage? As it seems difficult to turn the time constant R1C1 into a voltage controlled time constant, using the comparator switching levels instead may be a better option. Since these are already voltages, it will be easier to influence them. Adding or subtracting a constant voltage from the non-inverting input makes no sense, as it will simply shift both switching levels. What we want is to change the distance between the two levels. Changing the value of R2, for instance, would do this. R2 is connected to a constant voltage source of 2.5 volts. If we could make this source a variable, then we are already halfway. Changing this voltage will shift both levels up or down, so how can we change the circuit to make it shift only one of the two levels? With a diode. 
If we replace R3 by a diode, then uh, when the output of the op amp is high, the diode will pull the non-inverting input up because its impedance is much lower than that of R2. But when the output is low, the diode will block and the voltage on the non-inverting input is only determined by the source connected through R2. With this trick, the upper switching level is fixed, but the lower switching level has become voltage controllable. We can now control the distance between the comparator switching levels and therefore control the oscillator's frequency. There is of course a downside, which is that the duty cycle of the output signal is now no longer a constant 50%, but it changes with the frequency. It will be close to 50% when the control voltage is close to zero, and it will increase to 100% when the control voltage increases. Oscillation will stop when the lower switching level comes close to the upper switching level, and the op-amp can't handle it anymore. The simulation shows this nicely. On the breadboard we can see if this works in real life too. We replace R3 by a diode, while making sure to put it in the right way of course, uh, with its anode connected to the op-amp's output. Uh, and we replace the uh, 2.5 volt uh, voltage source by a variable voltage source. Now when we adjust the source the frequency changes. We have created a voltage controlled oscillator or VCO. To sweep the control voltage uh, I use the signal generator. Because mine uh, cannot do a saw wave I use the slow triangle signal instead. It has a 5 volt amplitude and a 2.5 volt offset, uh, meaning that it sweeps from 0 to 5 volts and back again. The oscilloscope now shows an image very similar to the one produced by LT Spice. To get an idea of the performance of the voltage controlled oscillator I have charted some data. I manually adjusted control voltage from 0.1 volts up to 5 volts in steps of 100 millivolts and entered the frequency and duty cycle as measured by my oscilloscope in an Excel spreadsheet. And then I created XY scatter plots for them. The minimum frequency was 175 Hz, uh, while the maximum frequency was over 3 kHz. This is more than 4 octaves. The duty cycle ran from about 38% up to 93%. As we see, the frequency plot is not very linear, but the duty cycle plot is. So you could use this circuit as a voltage to duty cycle converter instead of as a VCO. Ok, that's it. In this video I showed you how to simulate and analyze a dual supply uh, op-amp oscillator circuit in LT Spice and how to change it into a low voltage single supply circuit. We then went on to transform the circuit to modify it into a voltage controllable circuit and we ended up with a VCO with a quite linear uh, voltage to duty cycle transfer function. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, thank you for watching.